Hey folks, welcome to another video from a plain truth.info. A lot going on, so I'm going to cover it. I'm going to cover the land, sea, and air manipulation of weather terrorism, geoengineering from all three, land, sea, and air, and there air, and there's very few that are covering all three. But this is a document from the US Department of State clearly stating that any geoengineering weather manipulation is terrorism. And we're seeing it now on uh, uh, Mexico, uh, Gulf of Mexico, Lydia. We're seeing it with the Hurricane Harvey and now Irma. And there's actually one forming behind it that are clearly geoengineered and man-made. A lot of discussion going on. But I want to bring you to this document here. And this document shows clearly, this is from the IPCC and the Royal Society, showing land, sea, and air-based geoengineering methods. Yet few in the geoengineering community are even acknowledging that there is all these different uh, devices being used. And I also want to address uh, Mr. Dane Wigginton at Geoengineering Watch assertion that there's no such thing as wet surface air coolers and they can't be proven and they can't manipulate weather. But one thing that's not being covered is the massive fires being used for geoengineering. They're going on all over the world as I've been chronicling everywhere. We haven't seen the real sun here in days. Uh, fires across California and Oregon and Idaho currently is, is, is uh, understanding is that this is being done because the carbon formed from the uh, fires is being used to help steer the weather, to help create convections, to help create weather that uh, will uh, facilitate these hurricanes so they can increase intensity as part of the weather wars uh, geoterrorism being conducted uh, across the world. And um, I'll show that the fires here in the West aren't just uh, localized. It's also going on in Canada. It's also going on in Siberia. And it's also going on uh, across in Africa, which uh, Weather War 101 is showing how it is uh, coming across the Atlantic and being steered across the Atlantic. Uh, looks like it's going to hit Florida now. But they, they can move it as they want using land, sea, and air device. Uh, weather warfare terrorism that they're using. So take a look right here at this picture of Africa. And then you'll see in Africa all the uh, we fires uh, down below Central Africa. And as I'll get into the next video uh, about the uh, ocean-based machines, this is how they start it with the fires and then they can steer it for wherever they want. So we need to be waking up. We need to understand that this is a war going on. This is their order out of chaos folks order out of chaos that they have the double eagle for right here and you can see they're creating chaos throughout the world as they're threatening to bomb North Korea and provoking North Korea by dropping bombs right next door Japan has announced they're pulling over 30,000 troops out of North Korea so it's order out of chaos so keep your sanity and keep cool and the other thing I want to make clear is that NASA is a military operation it is not here to serve us it is here for it's run by the Department of Defense and here you see the NOAA and their Doppler radar system, the RF frequencies that they're using. Right next to the NOAA building, they have these facilities that are used for steering weather. How can anybody not see this and be aware? Everybody sees these golf balls. This is what they do. They manipulate the weather by using RF frequencies from the ground, creating the smoke, creating the water vapor machines. Uh, this is an article from Monday, August 20th, Natural News posted this uh, very important article that included the work from Weather 101, uh, his very important work, and also uh, my work, a couple of my videos on here, and also uh, gave Plain Truth a little shout out too, which is one of the first times anybody's linked my site on any of these uh, uh, well, well watched, well viewed. But it was very, uh, like I said earlier, it was a very um, uh, open piece as to whether or not it's being created that but I just want to note here so this is the article here it's out of the year it's number two already for the year and this was just from August 18th but you go to today on the Mike Adams natural news site clicking over so you look into today and it's not even listed this article is not even listed on the most viewed articles today or the week now there was over 570,000 views I believe um, the other day when we looked at the site and now it's showing uh, zero. So you see how this works folks? Um, Geoengineering Watch came out and said uh, wet surface air coolers weren't working, uh, weren't possible and possible and all of a sudden the article disappears but you can still see it here number four in the year but as of today uh, this is the Weather War 101 and a subsequent post Apparently he's going to do an interview. So I just want to bring your heads up to that. All right, let's get into this wet surface air coolers. 
Are we to believe the conclusions that trillions upon trillions of gallons of atmospheric moisture could be somehow pumped into the atmosphere to feed a hurricane like Hurricane Harvey? Again, this is a verifiably false narrative, which completely discredits the anti-geoengineering cause. What's the most recent glaring example of verifiably false and discrediting information being pushed by some individuals and websites? Many are claiming that most or all of the atmospheric moisture and precipitation for massive storms like Hurricane Harvey is coming from land-based cooling towers, which are a component of power generating facilities. So immediately I want to address the fact that there is patents for weather modification using nuclear power plants and wet surface air coolers. Uh, and you can see right here in this patent uh, method for weather modification and vapor generator for weather modification. This water, water vapor is jetted towards the sky, culmination through a vapor discharge. And then you can see down here, let me move this over. Weather modification using nuclear fusion reactor or nuclear fission heat source as a thermal exchanger charged with water to be heated for vapor generation. The method comp compromising introducing a circulation pipe, blah, 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 jetting a vapor, a state of collima collimation columns prepared with a vapor discharge pipe into the sky and forming a cloud in the sky with jet vapor for blocking sunlight, that's a misnomer, so as to reduce the temperature on the surface of the Earth. Solar radiation management, but that's not what it's being used for, folks. And here's another one, weather modification using microencapsulated material, a hygroscopic chemical agent utilized in cloud or fog seeding, uh, optimization of particle, particle, particle size for improved seeding results is obtained. So you can see there's tons and tons of patents, and I just don't understand why Geoengineering Watch or anybody else can't find these patents and show you clearly that this, this is being used for weather manipulation, and that it is possible. A short informational presentation was done at the request of numerous activists who asked me to address the claims of power plant cooling towers being used to supply the atmospheric moisture for climate engineering. The battle to fully expose and halt climate engineering is the most important challenge of our time. The only chance we have of prevailing in this epic battle is by standing on solid and factually verifiable conclusions. So here we see countless and countless wet uh, nuclear plants, energy plants, putting water vapor high, high up into the air to create the uh, clouds and water vapor generators to combine with the cloud condensation nuclei, the barium salt being sprayed with the chemtrails, the Doppler, NEXRAD, or next generation radars to steer the systems. And they're all connected um, across the country, across the states to coordinate the absolute control of the weather. This is how they do it, folks. Here it is. Look at that. You don't think they can use all this to manipulate weather? You think this is all industry being producing this stuff? No way. This is water vapor generators because weather terrorism and climate collapse has occurred. They're also using these systems to create the weather wherever they want because they can steer it. They can create hurricanes now. The huge intensities, category six, beyond category. They're creating out. Look at these. How can anyone say these do not generate weather? And here's all the coal plants that are being used to create all the bad uh, that, that destroyed our weather systems. We've been using coal in around the world for a hundred years. What do you think that's done to our atmosphere? It destroyed the weather systems. And now they're having, look at this. This is how they manipulate weather. Right there it is, folks. You can see it for yourself. The clouds come in and it gets darker. Look at this. Look at the massive amount of plumage coming out. It's weather manipulation, folks. This is how they do it. Okay, there we have it. Another clear sky day except for Exxon. Pumping it out like a mofo. Otherwise, 
inside the, ha the uh, metallic haziness on the horizon and through the acute angle of the sun at morning hours. We have a completely clear sky, except for the corridor of water vapor production. This was clear 30 minutes ago. You tell me this isn't affecting the climate and modifying the weather. And I'll tell you, you have a childlike mind. I'll say you're under mind control. How is the critical cause of exposing and halting climate engineering being harmed of the very individuals and sources who claim to be fighting to stop climate engineering by propagation of patently false information and conclusions that completely discredit the entire anti-geoengineering community? Atmospheric cooling towers. Atmospheric cooling towers use no mechanical devices to move air through the tower. A cooling tower is a heat transfer device used in industry to cool water that is used in a cooling system. Cooling towers are shell structures built of concrete in which hot water is allowed to cool. Thereby, thermal energy is released to the environment. The most well-known form is the natural draft wet cooling tower, as shown in this animation. Natural draft wet cooling towers can be up to 200 meters tall and are made up of a cold water basin, an air inlet near the bottom of the tower, evaporates. This can be seen as plumes of steam. Natural draft wet cooling towers function according to the simple principle of the stack effect also known as natural circulation. Water is wet, 62,500 power plants from 2 to 240 of these wet seal air cooler blower facilities evaporating from anywhere from 18,000 gallons a minute to 700,000 gallons a minute adding trillions of gallons of water vapor to the atmosphere and God knows how much heat and has for the last 50 years. All right, so this is the effect of cooling towers on the atmosphere. This is from Weather Wars 101. He, he's citing a 1971 Zion nuclear power plant study on the effects of cooling towers on the atmosphere and weather. 
Um, there are, as he states here, 62,500 of these power plants worldwide. Also, the uh, wet surface air cooling farms that could only have one conceivable purpose, known as WSAC. All right, if we scroll down, this is the study, the effect of cooling tower effluence on atmospheric conditions in northeastern Illinois. It was done in 1971. So the study shows that it was already known back in 71 that nine massive amounts of water vapor from even one nuclear power plant with four cooling towers would have significant effects on the atmospheric conditions and weather. So here's a different independent study confirming that uh, wet surface air cooling systems began around uh, 1971. It says here the waste heat removed by the cooling system during the steam condensation step must ultimately be transferred to the surrounding environment. The high heat unit capacity water has been the traditional transfer medium of choice because it's relative, relative availability and expensive and reusable. Wet cooling systems use water to absorb heat via indirect contact with steam and a condenser. The heated water is either discharged to a large surface water body such as a river or lake or passed through a cooling tower and recycled back. In either case, heat absorbed in the condenser is released to the environment through a combination of evaporation and sensible heating of the surroundings. Prior to 1990, virtually all steam electric power plants used wet cooling systems. And then it goes on to say, down here a little further, that, however, in the early 1970s, new steam electric generation began using recirculated cooling. And here's a list. And here's a list of extensive patents on geoengineering and aerosol spray. And this seems to validate and further confirm that the wet surface air coolers were rolled out in uh, 1971. I mean, look at all these patents that were taken out. Methods of treating atmospheric conditions by intermittent dispersions of materials, weather modification methods. So it does seem to indicate that wet surface air coolers are a major component uh, developed starting in 1971 after the Mount Zion study. It is impossible to find a power plant of any fuel type that has no wet surface air coolers whatsoever. Fog potential, this is from the Zion study, fog potential was calculated for mechanical natural draft, natural draft towers and pure natural draft, draft towers of 350 and 500 feet. Certainly large quantities of heat released to the atmosphere will result in an increase in convection, turbulence, and cumulus clouds. So Weather Wars goes on to state, so what happened to all these concerns from 1970? They disappeared from the scientific community and from society as a whole, while simultaneously being developed as the foundation of the global engineering process. He says, we have 50 years of evidence of this reality. The very serious concerns raised by the Zion Power Plant study were enough to prevent their use on environmental reasons for that one plant. But subsequently, 7,000 power plants in the United States and 62,500 power plants worldwide. The potential impact of that one power plant that was deemed too great a risk to the environment now exists 62,500 times over. A Carson 1970 study states that extra heat and water vapor from cooling towers may create cumulus clouds and that possibility of tower plumes acting as trigger to produce extra cumulus, cumulus congestus clouds and precipitation miles downwind of the release must be considered. There are frequent occasions when tower plumes can be seen to evaporate and then recondense to some extent at higher altitudes further downwind. Under stable conditions with higher humidities, the plumes will persist after leveling off and appear downwind as stratus cloud covered and merge and reinforce existing cloud cover. So you see how they're altering the clouds here. And here's a, from Weather War 101, excellent example of the wet surface air coolers. Just like steam in a teapot, it's not rocket science, folks. It's just water vaporizer, vaporization. And then they take it and they move it from one to the other to the other to steer it in the directions they need to do it. You can see it right here, one to the next to the next one. This is how they do it. It's very clear. And then here you can see all the sites just turning on as they're creating the weather. They're creating the, the Doppler. They're activating the Doppler uh, radars to steer the weather as, it, as you can see here. Watch, watch it develop. And then they steer it. 
as they direct it. The, the, it. Weather doesn't form on land. It needs water sources, hydrological cycles. You need an ocean, you need a sea, you need a lake. These are appearing on land. They're being created by these machines. Water, vapor, wet surface, air coolers, directed by Nexrad Doppler systems. It's very clear and it's been going on for decades and decades. And why anybody in, in uh, the truth movement can't see this or can't acknowledge that these are being used and they're being manipulated to change the weather is, is, is beyond my understanding. But uh, Weather War 101 has done an incredible job of documenting this, as you can well see. Storms like Hurricane Harvey. They claim that the rising convection cells seen in satellite images of Harvey over the extremely warm Gulf of Mexico is proof of these water vapor machines. No, and here's the water va vapor generation devices, the wet surface air coolers. And they can make weather or they can steer weather either way. So here they got the weather they generated as we showed in the previous video. And here you see in its counter cyclical, counterclockwise direction. And here there's the steering devices, the, uh, the ground-based wet, uh, wet surface air coolers, water vapor machines, and also the Nexrad Doppler systems. Uh, those are the Nexrad Doppler steering stations he's, he's highlighting here. And he's showing you where they are and then also where the wet surface air coolers are. So this is what they look like. You see these cross hatches. This is all the wet surface water vapor generating machines to create the weather. And once they shoot it up in the sky, combine it with the barium salts, they can do anything with the weather, folks. They can do whatever they want. And here, Weather War 101 is showing you where all the facilities are, how they're being made, and what they're using to make the weather with. But it's also combined with the Doppler radar system, the NEXRAD generation radar, RF frequencies that are steering the weather. Are we to believe the conclusions that trillions upon trillions of gallons of atmospheric moisture could be somehow pumped into the atmosphere to feed a hurricane like Hurricane Harvey? Again, this is a verifiably false narrative which completely discredits the anti-geoengineering cause. All right, so when I answer the question about wet surface air coolers and the water supplies. This is from the um, Stennis Space Center in Mississippi that was shown in the video creating the uh, water vapors that were creating the weather to create rain. Uh, and if you look at Stennis, look at this picture here, folks. There's the water supply. There's the water supply. How about if we look at the plants here? And this over here so you can see better. Here's the water supply, folks. Look at all the plants with all the water supplies. That's where they get all the water from. So that's explained. Another picture. I could go on, but these are the water sources. Also, they have pipes, tunnels. They can transport water from great distances. I wonder where the rain comes from. Here it is. This is Lamar County some kind of power plant. They're using wet surface air coolers and they're generating clouds like you would not believe. I've just been sitting here on a bike ride getting all wet and it's these guys right here that are making the weather combined with whatever other goddamn crap they're using. Talk about fucked up. Look at this stuff. God damn fucking cloud machines. This is where the rain comes from, people. Open your goddamn eyes.
cooling towers right here where that steam's coming from. Oh, it's not really important, but look. All right, you've seen the cloud in other videos. The reason why this is showing up because it's very humid, you know. All right, so this is like three different videos, and this is the third one and the last one. And there's your cooling towers. All right. Anyone who's ever seen a convective storm form, especially over arid desert regions, knows that such storms are extremely common with clouds that appear from formerly blue skies and rise tens of thousands of feet into the atmosphere. Are there invisible water vapor machines under such occurrences? Of course not. Where's that coming off of? I mean, that's like billowing out of where? Because none of the clouds I got at the lake this morning had come off of the lake, which is a really big source of moisture, I would think. I just want to document that all these clouds aren't coming out of the water. They're like in a chain off of something over there. See how they, they rose up out of something particular. They were released. These are releases. Like that guy over there. Anyway. And here we go, the next rad, creating the frequency blanket. It's all going up, up, up. That's why the bottoms, that's why they have no flat bottoms anymore. They're all being pulled up. And they're not even clouds, they're, they're, they're anthropogenic clouds. They're not natural clouds. They're billowing up out of different special places, and I'm going to find out. Nine, we are on cloud 12 because that's how many new types of clouds have been added to this historic update coming from meteorologist i'm a little biased right exciting stuff guys all right so the new types include the vladis roll cloud which has been designated as a whole new species you can see it gets its name from this long horizontal tube like shape next one up we have the cabum the hole punch cloud, this big circular gap, is sometimes caused by aircraft taking off and landing. Very easy to see, right? Makes sense there. And we have the hole punch cloud, this big circular gap, is sometimes caused by aircraft taking off and And here we can see what Miss Cutie Pie Meteorologist is so perky and referring to is these holes in the clouds here, folks. Just type in hole in the clouds and you'll see all the artificial weather. This is going on everywhere around the world. There's different applications. But you can see all the artificial weather being created by these ground-based and aerosol spraying devices to create artificial weather for many different applications. Asparagus, these are gorgeous. It's actually my favorite. It's kind of looking like it waves while you're underwater. I mean, these are actually beautiful. I mean, check these out. And then finally, we also have the big surfer waves of the Fluctus clouds. Ooh. These are actually caused by winds above blowing faster than the winds within the cloud itself. So you kind of get that shape. So beautiful, right? There's just a sample of the new additions that we have. Meteorologists, sky watchers, daydreamers, we're all geeking out, guys. What do you guys think? I Please love that. Favorite. Who, who gets to name those things? Those are. That's a great question. Fluctus. Wish it was me. It's like, let me look that up for you. <laughs> okay, there we have it. Another clear sky day except for Exxon. Pumping it out like a mofo. Otherwise, inside the, ha the uh, metallic haziness on the horizon and through the acute angle of the sun at morning hours, we have a completely clear sky. Except for the corridor of water vapor production. This was clear 30 minutes ago. You tell me this isn't affecting the climate and modifying the weather. And I'll tell you, you have a childlike mind. I'll say you're under mind control. Can power plant cooling towers create impressive cloud formations under the right conditions? Absolutely yes.
Do such cloud formations contain even the slightest fraction of the moisture being produced by storms like Harvey? Absolutely not. So here's a NASA document on NASA.gov. <clears throat> From uh, water vapor is known to be Earth's most abundant greenhouse gas. Heat amplifying effect of water vapor is potent enough to double the climate warming. Water vapor feedback can also amplify the warming effect of other greenhouse gases such that the warming brought about by increased carbon dioxide allows water vapor to enter the atmosphere. The difference in atmosphere with a strong water vapor feedback and one with a weak feedback is enormous, thus proving the role of water vapor generators. And then there is the highly referenced NASA cloud making machine, so called. Dead. if you can't hear what I'm saying. Um, I couldn't even hear myself. This is the loudest sound you could possibly conceive. And, as it turns out, the cleanest. And in about an hour's time, someone in Mississippi is going to get wet washing. It will actually rain. I told you. It's raining! <laughs> That's unbelievable! Oh, NASA's playing God. It's making its own weather. What's this NASA facility actually for? What are they actually doing there? Are there 25 trillion gallons of water hiding somewhere under this facility? The NASA facility is for testing rocket engines, not weather modification because a few raindrops may sometimes fall from the rocket engine testing under ideal conditions. Are we to believe that such tests could somehow supply 25 trillion gallons to the atmosphere that would then come back down and cover massive regions with record flooding, like what just happened with Hurricane Harvey? And are we to believe that there are perhaps hundreds or thousands of these facilities secretly hidden all over the country, which makes all the rain with some sort of invisible moisture source? Though the plume that is emitted from the NASA facility does indeed look impressive, it's still nothing more than a rocket engine testing facility. Now let's take a look at one of the so-called storm cloud weather making machines that's been featured in videos from sources that are disseminating the water vapor machines are supplying the moisture for storms, false narrative. Yes, this video looks very impressive at first glance and countless individuals and sites ran with it Unfortunately, those same sources and sites did no due diligence investigation whatsoever. What's the true nature of the machine shown in this video? Many have claimed it was a weather modification test done in the US with FEMA officials present. Now the truth, it's a primitive Russian tank decontamination vehicle and the film was made in Russia with Russian military personnel. All the claims about this vehicle, what it does, what it's capable of doing, were patently false. All right, so take a look with your own eyes here. Look at the upper screen there where they're decontaminating one tank. Look at the spray nozzle, folks. That's one tank. Does that compare anything at all, even close to this? Are you kidding me? This is coming from water sources where they pump through this machine and look at the output. This is not, I mean, maybe it can be modified to use to, to de uh, delouse tanks or whatnot, but clearly this is not used to, <laughs> to delouse tanks and clean them up as an old Russian machine. This is that, that's just patently false, patently false. Credibility is crucial in the fight for the greater good. Make sure you're standing on solid ground at all times in this battle.